Welcome back to the second session. In this session, I am going to discuss about uh, the syllabus contents and everything, the prescribed textbook, the modules, how your syllabus has been divided into modules. Advanced computer architecture, parallelism, scalability and programmability, third edition. The author is Kai Hang and Naresh Dutwani. So, this is by McGraw-Hill Publications, third edition is the prescribed textbook for you. Apart from this, there is another reference book, a very interesting book. Module 1, module 1 is derived from chapter 1, cha chapter 1, chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the prescribed textbook that is part 1, chapter 1, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Now again module 2 is derived from uh, part 2, chapter 4 and uh, module 3 again is derived from chapter 2 chapters in module 3. Right. Now coming to the module 4, module 4 again is derived from part 3, it is chapter number 7 chapter number 8.1 till 8.4 and chapter number 9. So, these three chapters are going to be part in module 4. Now, coming to module 5, it is again, it is again going to be three chapters, chapter uh, number 10, chapter 11 and chapter number 12. So, these are the three chapters that we are going to look into for module 5. Clear? Right. Now, coming to the details of the syllabus, but before we go into the details of the syllabus, let us look the syllabus. Let us look into the outcomes of a outcomes of this advanced computer ar architecture as defined by VTU. Now, the first outcome that is defined by VTU goes like this: understand the concept of parallel computing and hardware technologies. So, I'm going to repeat again: understand the concept of parallel computing and hardware technologies is going to be the first outcome now the second outcome is illustrate and contrast the parallel parallel architecture illustrate and contrast the parallel architectures is going to be the second outcome third one is recall concepts recall parallel programming concepts so these are the three outcomes as defined by vtu for this advanced computer architecture course now coming to the first one the outcome the first one it says understand the concepts of parallel computing and hardware now this first lo or co is going to be covered in chapter 1 and sorry module 1 module 2 and module 3 right module 1 module 2 and module 3 is with respect to the outcome 1 now looking at the second one illustrate and contrast the parallel architectures this is going to be completed or learned from module 4 Module 4 looks into the various architectures and their uh, advantages advantages and limitations. Now coming to the fifth one. Fifth module is about the third outcome, recall parallel programming concepts. So here we are going to look into the concepts of parallel programming, how it evolved, etc. etc. are going to be looked detail in module 1. Right? Now now C will 1, 2, 3. Outcome 2 is going to be from module 4. Outcome 3 is going to be from module 5. So, 1, 2, 3 is first one, module 4 is the second outcome, module 5 is the third outcome. This is how the outcomes are attained, right? Okay, then. Now, getting into detail, now getting into detail of each module, the first module discusses about uh, the concepts of parallel computing models, now scalability analysis, theory of parallelism, and then data dependency, program flow mechanisms, network technologies, benchmarking measurement, performance loss, program behaviors loss, program behaviors, etc., etc. All are going to be discussed in detail. Module 1 are going to be like this. Now, we are going to look into the theories of parallelism, parallel computer models, the various computer models that have been evolved the state of computing starting with the first generation we are going to look into the present generation then we are looking into multi processes and multi computing uh, models multi vector and uh, simd single instruction multiple data computers then vlsi models pram models program and network uh, properties conditions for pa program partitioning and scheduling program flow mechanisms system inter interconnection architectures principle of scalable performance performance metrics and measurements this is a very important one performance metrics and measurements because when you want to accept an architecture you need to look into the performance and what are the metrics that have been used metrics that have been used for measuring the performance becomes a very crucial part 
and then uh, parallel uh, processing applications what applications can be derived for and then the last one speed up performance uh, obviously the speed up performance is going to be compared because it looks into the previous model and this one it is a very important one to be looked into right now module 2 looks into the hardware technologies processors it looks into the processors it looks into the memory hierarchy structures this then it looks into what are the advances in the processor technology whether it could be super scalar or vector processors are going to be looked into it and then we are going to discuss in detail the memory hierarchy technology that has gone into this and uh, at the end we are going to look into the me virtual memory technologies that's able right now coming to the module 3 again it talks about uh, the bus the cache shared memory bus systems here you are going to look into the cache memory organization shared memory organization because this this talks about in what way you are going to achieve achieve a parallelism whether it is a shared concept shared memory approach or uh, not is going to be looked here right and then uh, you look into the consistency models whether it is a weak consistency model or sequential consistency model then you're going to look into the concepts of pipelining parallel pipelining and then you're going to look into the super scalar uh, the super scalar uh, uh, techniques that goes into it and then linear pipeline processing uh, non-linear uh, pipeline processing etc are going to be looked into it then you are going to look into the instruction uh, pipeline design then uh, in that arithmetics pipeline design issues etc etc all three now coming to the module uh, 4 which looks into the architecture here you are going to look into the multi processors and multi computer uh, architectures multi process system interconnections if it is a multi processor how the process are going to be interconnected etc are going to be looked into it and then we we'll look into the cache uh, uh, problems cache coherence problems cache coherence and uh, synchronization mechanisms because if you are maintaining a, a multiple cache then uh, coherence consistency and synchronization is a very crucial one that is going to be looked into it and then we are going to look into the three generations of uh, multi computers then uh, then we are going to look into the message passing mechanism the message passing mechanisms the message passing mechanisms then we will be looking into the multi vector and simd computers we are going to look into vector process multi vector uh, multi programming concepts are going to be looked into it and then SIMD computing uh, organization is going to be looked into it and then multi-threaded models, threaded models and again uh, very important uh, one data flow architecture it made a promising at the beginning but it was not able to evolve uh, this is, was paid because of so many constraints on this data flow architectures now again we look into the uh, latency hiding techniques that have been used to enhance the performance or uh, use the principles of uh, multi uh, threading or uh, at what level you are looking into this uh, at uh, processing level or are the, those, those details are going to be looked into it and then scalable and multi threaded architectures are going to be looked into it at the end we have we will be discussing about a hybrid uh, architecture hybrid architecture is nothing but taking the best out of all and trying to combine this one is going to be discussed in module 4 in module 4 now coming to the module 5 here we are going to look into the software approaches for parallel programming we are going to look into the languages and computers compilers that support uh, uh, parallel programming models the parallel uh, programming languages and compilers that that helps us for uh, doing this then we are going to look for uh, doing this then we are going to look into the dependency analysis of data arrays and then we want to look into parallel program development and uh, environment synchronization multi processing models are going to be looked into it in instruction and system level parallelism are going to be discussed and then the various at uh, the instruction level or whether it is a system level is going to be looked into it even if uh, a data parallel uh, execution can be looked into it is also going to be discussed and then we are going to discuss a typical uh, Mm, processor uh, model uh, a typical uh, processor model based on software approach and then we are going to look into the going to look into the various compilers that can help in parallel execution of the instruction so that parallelism can be achieved and we are going to look into at what level this is going to be achieved and then uh, we are going to look into operand uh, forwarding fetch forwarding fetching etc etc register level and then we are going to look into the algorithms that supports this parallelism either it could be at uh, 
thread level or it could be at the instruction level so both are going to be discussed in detail either at the thread level or instruction level parallelism achieving through achieving through programming parallel programming techniques with the help of a compiler which can <coughs> support parallel instruction execution or parallel data execution so this is how your syllabus is going to be spread across five modules now coming to the first module as i said no earlier the first module you need to refer to chapter 1 2 1 3 for the second module you need to refer uh, chapter 4 for third module it is going to be chapter is going to be for third module now for for module 4 it is going to be chapter 7 chapter 8 chapter 9 is going to be for module 4 and for module 5 it is going to be chapter number 10 10.1 to 10.3 chapter number 11.1 to 11.2 and chapter 12 come to 11.2 and chapter 12 come so this is the reference book the previous one